Hello and welcome to tutorial three. So now we're going to build on what we did in the last lesson where we made a bunch of cubes move and we're going to make a line renderer move this time. So using Unity's built-in line renderer. So you can see here, I've already created a new uh, folder called tutorial three and I've duplicated the template scene, dropped it in that folder and named it tutorial three. So I've got a clean template scene here and I've gone ahead and created a new script and we've called this script FFT line renderer underscore V1 because it's the version one of our line renderer. Um, we're going to build on this in future. So we're going to keep versions of these scripts. Okay, now getting started, we're going to borrow a little bit from um, what we did previously. So if we open up our FFT object array um, from uh, the previous lesson, what we can do, because we know we're going to be using the frequency band analyzer and the number of frequency bands again, we just copy this over. drop this in here. So we're going to need this for our line renderer as well because we're still going to be visualizing the FFT and the frequency bands. Um, and there's nothing else really in here that we need at this stage. What we do need though is because we know that this object is going to require a line renderer, Unity has a handy tag, if you haven't used it before, uh, and called require component type of and you pass a type in and in this case it's the line renderer so this just lets it know that if you're adding this component to a game object in the editor that it needs to have this component line renderer so let's just go ahead and create ourselves a new object um, well we'll create ourselves a new line renderer in here so that's under effects right-click effects line and there we go we've got our line let's name that FFT line you can see we've got our unity line renderer component here and I'll go through some of these uh, options when uh, we get it moving just in case you're not familiar with it and then we're going to add our FFT line renderer to this object Okay, uh, so what we can do now, um, because the synth is the most responsive, we're going to add our synth into this frequency, into the FFT. And obviously if we hit play currently, nothing's going to happen because we haven't told our line renderer to do anything just yet. So what we need to do, first of all, we need to have a reference to our line renderer. We're just gonna call that underscore line. Um, and because we know that this object is going to have a line render because we have a required component on the top here, we can use get component line, line renderer and that will grab the component of the same game object. Okay, now what we want to do is set how long we want our line to be. So we're going to have a public float and call that line length. And this will define how long our line is. So let's just set it as a default value of four. Uh, we want to know what the spacing is between those uh, points in the line, which we will calculate later on. I'll show you that. So we've got a spacing. And then what we have is the float, uh, the strength. We want to know how far we want. Oh, so we'll make that public. This, how high we want the line to move. So we'll call that strength and we'll just give that a value of four as well. Okay, so our public vote, uh, values are our line length and the strength that we want the line to offset offset by okay so in our start method we have got our line component from our object 
uh, we now need to figure out how many. So in this line, in this line renderer, it has a method for setting the number of points. So it ha it takes in a bunch of positions. Um, you can set the number of positions, and it takes them in as vector three positions, and then it uses that information to draw a line. So what we want to do is set the line position count to the frequency band count. Now remember in the previous tutorial we did this nifty trick where the frequency band analyzer enum, this bands enum, actually has an integer value stored with it. So we can just do line position count, cast it to an integer of our frequency bands. So that is telling this line that it needs eight positions or 64 positions depending on what we have chosen. Now, to calculate our spacing, because we know the length of our line and we know how many uh, positions, how many frequency bands we're measuring, what we can do is get our spacing equals the line length divided by the line position count or the frequency bands. Same as same since we have set them to equal the same. So currently we have gotten the line component, we've set the positions and we've cal calculated our spacing. Now this isn't going to do anything because we still haven't told this line where to place any of the positions. So if I now go back into the editor Let's have a look. Let's open up our line renderer here. Uh, we can see there's a list of positions here. It doesn't have any currently. I'm just going to move this back into world zero. Now if I hit play, music start, you can see here it's filled this list with all the positions, but they're all set to world zero currently. So what we want to do is pass in those positions based on the frequency analysis. So let's go and have a quick little look at that over here. So in our update, what we're going to do, we're going to use a for loop. Uh, that just little shortcut I did there for anyone who's not across it is if you just type in for and press tab tab, it fills in the for loop for you. And uh, then you can just tab across to the iterator um, variable name and, and the uh, conditional statement. So in this case, we're going to use a for loop through all of the line dot position count. So for every position within the line, we are going to calculate the normalized position along the line. So we want to know at what point between zero and one are we along the line? So normalizing a value just means taking a one value range and squishing it down into zero to one. So our normalized position, normpos, is our i, our iterator value, divided by, and we have to cast this as a float because if you have the denominator, um, as an integer, it will return an integer. And we're going to use our line position count again. Okay, so this gives us our normalized position along the line between zero and one. Now we want to do to grab our, let's go float uh, x position. Oops. Cut, cut, and go. Okay, so we're going to use a for loop here to iterate through all our positions in the line. Uh, that little shortcut I just did there for anyone who's not, a, not aware, if you just type in for, press tab, tab, it fills in your for loop for you and allows you to tab between your iterator variable name and your conditional statement. So here we want to 
loop through all of the positions within the line. So we're going to get our line component and we're going to use the position count there. Then what we want to do after this is we want to calculate the X and the Y positions. So for our X position, that's easy enough because we're creating a straight line. It's a float value. So X pos equals, it's our iterator times the spacing that we had calculated earlier. So at zero, it would be zero times whatever our spacing is, one, one times the spacing, two, you know, say our spacing was 0.2, it would be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and go on like that. So we're going to get a straight line in that case. Um, so for the moment, what we'll do is we'll just set these positions in a nice straight line without applying the FFT values. So let's just go uh, for the moment float ypos equals zero. And then let's just calculate our position, our pos vector three position equals new vector three. And we'll pass it in our x position and our y position into the y and x components respectively and zero along the z axis because we're not manipulating it depth wise. Okay, the final thing we have to do to get this into the line component is bring up our line component, do set position. Now this method here is asking for an index. So which index do we want to set? We want to set i, which is our iterator. So we so we start at zero, finish on our line position count. Then we want to set the position to pos. Now, if this all works, we should end up with a straight line with a length of four. So let's go in here. And let's hit the play button. Okay, so what we can see here is it's created, it has created a line, but it's applied a default texture. I'll turn this music off. It's applied a default texture to it with this long stretch particle along it. So what we're going to do is in our tutorial three, um, we're going to right click, create material. Uh, we're going to make an emissive, let's make it an emissive yellow. And let's come over here. Once we select the material, we'll hit the emission and let's give it like a, let's give it a nice bright yellow emissive. Um, because it's an HDR high dynamic range uh, color, you can push it past its full value, which will make it glow uh, in the post process. So let's just change the intensity up to one. And we can assign this material. So if you click on your line, it has a material slot here. So we can drag out emissive yellow over to that. Now let's hit play. Now we've got a nice emissive yellow line. Okay, let's just drag that over. Let's say neg one, hit play. Now it's nice and centered. Okay. All right, so what we want to do is, oh, I'll just quickly show you through here. The main things that you want to look at here are your line width, so we can change the width here. So I'm gonna make that 0.2. Like 3, get a nice fat line. Uh, and we can change our end cap vertices. So it just rounds it off a little bit. So let's make that like 6 or something. Nice and round. And the corner vertices as well. Probably best to leave at 3 or 4. Um, I'll show you how that affects it uh, in a future tutorial. Then that's the, they're the only settings that you really need for the moment. Okay. Now. Obviously, we're still just getting a straight line currently because we're not manipulating it using the FFT. So let's go back to our script and let's calculate our Y position using the FFT. So similar to what we did in our object array, we're going to get our Y position using the FFT.getBandValue function. And we can just straight copy that from here, if we've got our names the same, so FFT dot get band value, we've named this freak bands as well. Now, what we want to do is we want to multiply that by the strength. So 
say the get van get band value returned a 0.5 and our strength was two that would give us a position of one so let's we don't need to plug that in because the y value is already being passed to the line so now we can go back over here hit play we can see that we're getting the line manipulated by the FFT. So now I've seen it run in eight bars. What we can do is run it up to 64. Now with such a fat line like this, we might want to bring it down to say 0.1. It's a bit thinner considering we're going to have loads more points along it. And let's give it a longer length. Let's say eight. Let's just make that back to minus three. Now let's see how our line runs. There we go. It's a bit, a bit off screen at the moment, but so we can ramp up our. Um... If you come into scene mode, you can change it to shaded wireframe, so you can actually see the mesh that it's creating. Now, what we might want to do is change these corner vertices here to like three or four, and you see it softens these corners as they pop up. Our second audio reactive element done. That wraps up tutorial three. Uh, we'll be back for tutorial four shortly.